Do you use the switch function? When testing multiple conditions, it's a neat alternative to nesting if functions or the ifs function. Let's see some examples. The switch function tests a value against a list of values and returns the matching result. This makes it a great option when testing text values, but it's not limited to that. And we're going to see that in this video, especially with the later examples. Right now, we have an example where we want to test the level of these customers, and that will determine the discount that they have earned. And you can see that our executive level get 20%, whereas as we work our way down, our basic level have no discount. Using the switch function in cell E3, we would start with our switch, and it first of all asks for the expression. So what is the case, the value that you're testing against? And this example is C3, the level. Now we get to offer the different values. So starting off with executive here, and the option for executive is going to be 20%. So there's the value and the result if there is a match of that value. So I'll enter the other values to test and the result I'd like to apply. So premium next with a 15% discount, followed by a plus with a 10% discount, and then 0% on the end, which is the default value, the if false case. I could test it against the basic level, that would be good. But in this example, I just want to demonstrate that there is this default case. If I close this off and run it, we have 20% for the executive level, but sending that down, we've got the appropriate discount dependent on their level. Now you might be thinking, why didn't you just do a lookup formula on columns M and N there? And we absolutely could. Lookups are great. But as we get to our later examples, you'll see where switch can take a different path and offer a little bit more than lookups can, where in this example, it absolutely would be a solid reason to do that instead. Wait for those later examples. What I would like to show at the moment is if I expand this group in and close this one, you can see I've offered the if or ifs alternative. And there's not a great deal of difference in the size of the formula, but I would argue that switch is much more straight to the point, cleaner and more concise. You can see that with switch, we only have to offer the case once, where you can see with the other two functions, they are repeating the reference to C3, the level, in order to then test it in that expression. Now, we can also use switch to test numeric values. And a lot of people don't realize this, because of the way switch is built. But for this example, you can see that I now want to apply a discount if they've spent more than 1,500, 1,000, 500, or indeed anything below that. And to do this with switch, I'm just going to start by expanding the formula bar here so that I can break the switch function up onto multiple lines. Unnecessary, but it will make it easier to digest when switch functions get a little bit more complex. So I'm going to use Alt Enter for a new line. And when we want to use numeric value tests with switch, we use the expression of true, because then we can perform some logical tests and any that evaluate true would then be a match on that expression. So if I do Alt Enter, for the first one, I want to test if D3 is greater than or equal to 1500. And the result of that would be 20%. So you can see I am now writing a logical test a little bit like I would with if. I am having to reference D3 because that test of D3 greater than or equals 1500 would evaluate to true, therefore matching the case that I've offered. Continuing with this, we need D3 is greater than or equals 1000. That would be 15%. D3 is greater than or equals 500. That is 10%. And I'll finish it off with the default value of 0%. Let's expand that formula bar a tiny bit more. 
And with this switch function, if I run it, it works just like the previous one. And I repeat, I did not need to break it up onto the multiple lines there. This formula is not so heavy, but it does clearly define the different items in the list. So it's a neat way of laying it out. So this is brilliant, multiple conditional tests made easy. And we absolutely can use our AND and OR functions within Switch as well. So for example, maybe I wanted to offer a 25% discount if they have a status with the letter Y and have spent 1500 or more. So for this case, if I jump back to my formula, let's open up the bar one more line, and I'll put this at the top. You'll notice that it is important the order that I've written these conditions. I've got the test against the largest value first, because as switch test it in order, left to right, the first one to evaluate to true, the first one that matches the value, the case, would be the result returned. So I'm putting at the start here the AND function, and I want to know if C3 is equal to the letter Y, and if D3 is greater than or equal to 1500. And if that's the case, it will be 25%. So if that AND function evaluates to true, that would return to 25% before it then gets to our other values in the list. Running this formula, let's send that one down because we will see that the fourth customer there does qualify for 25% with the status of Y and more than 1500 spent. So the last two examples return values, but I wanted to show something a little bit different, a little bit outside the box. And here we are using the switch function to execute a function that is chosen from a list. So in cell C2, I have a sum function and we have the sum results by country here, but I can change it to an average to get average results or indeed the count large to get count large results. And if I click on one of the cells of the formula, we can see it, the switch function testing the case of C2, and then is running either a sum ifs, average ifs, or count ifs function. Now I did something similar to this in my recent aggregate function video, linking that to the description, because aggregate can perform many functions, 19 different functions. But with switch here, we're able to even go beyond that. We could use any formula we wanted. And that's what this demonstration is trying to show. But it's not just that. I'm sure you saw the chart was changing, but keep your eye on the title of the chart because even that is being affected. I've got large orders by country for 2024, but if I was to change that to a sum, I'll get a completely different chart title, which even includes the sum of those values. And if I change it to the average, I get a different chart title again, saying that these are the average sales by country that I'm looking at. And that has been done by another switch function. If I move this chart down, I've put it in a cell behind. There's the switch, testing that value in C2, and then is returning a different string, one of them even including a formula with text and sum there, to be used as that chart title. So these are just some additional examples of where Switch can really change your game. And when it comes to testing multiple conditions, maybe you should make the change and start using Switch rather than using multiple ifs in your formula. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. It really helps. And why not subscribe so that you are notified about the latest videos that come out at this channel. Thank you for your time, take care, and I'll see you again soon.